Kyle here from All Media Reviews. Uh, I'm going to do a quick video here just on something I watched over the weekend, the Full Swing Netflix series Season 2, Full Swing 2. Um, eight episodes. I watched the uh, first season last year, really liked a lot of it. Um, they dealt with some players like Going to Live, like they showed Ian Poulter and Brooks Kepka, I think Dustin Johnson. Johnson. Um, and um, the thing is with golf, I love golf. I mean, it's sort of been my focus as like my favorite sport the last 10 years, probably. I like to like think of it, especially the, I've always been a fan of it since I was a kid, watching the majors especially. Um, and, you know, it was really no different, especially like when COVID happened. It's like the golf PGA Tour was still happening. So I was like, I at least can watch this one sport. Um, Everything with Live, though, has kind of changed my feeling about it to some degree. All these players, good players going to Live. I mean, Phil Mickelson going, I didn't care, but um, some, some of the people that, like Patrick Reed or um, Sergio Garcia, some of those players I didn't I didn't really have a problem. I mean, Phil Mickelson I, I used to like. He's still a good player. He won the PGA a couple of years ago, but, um, you know, he's old, eligible for the, the, the Champions Tour at this point. He's old enough. Um, so I just, I've not really been a fan of Liv for various reasons. Um, but then they started bringing people like Brooks Kepka and, um, Cam, Cameron Smith. And, uh, now we're just recently John Rahm. And so I've just kind of, I did watch the, the, the Players' Championship a few weeks ago and it was fun. And I'm still kind of watching. At some point, you know, this whole thing with Liv, I hope it dies down. I, I really don't know if five years from now. If the whole situation with Liv is going to be like the way the way it is now, I hope I hope they merge or something. I hope it's like a USFL thing. That would be the best case scenario where the Live Tour just ends. It, eventually, it gets absorbed and they become one sort of entity. And they implement some of the Live things in there, but you get all the players that are on Live, basically all the good ones back. As much as they're going to have to sort of deal with the ramifications, I don't know if it's going to happen. So, um, but season two of Full Swing. A similar deal they showed like Tom Kim who's now 21 but um Korean I believe he's from Korea um Phenom you know he's super talented I do remember seeing him play at some of the majors and he won I think twice last year um so that was cool to see him see his life um they did a lot they showed Rory they showed uh Ricky Fowler who's a favorite of mine um it's just kind of reminding of like seeing some of the the the, the you know, behind the scenes, family life, kind of stuff that a lot of these players go through. I mean, in the first season, they showed both um, Jordan Spieth and Justin Thomas. They showed Justin Thomas again. Justin Thomas, unfortunately, did not have a great season last year. But then a lot of the focus of uh, season two was because it was a Ryder Cup uh, year. And the Ryder Cup is something that I've liked, but I've never been, like, attached to and followed religiously, although... I do remember the one in 2016 was actually in my hometown here. At, they played at Hazeltine. It was right after my wedding, actually. Um, I wanted to actually get my father uh, tickets for that for, like, a gift for his birthday. I just wasn't able to do that. I mean, tickets were not obviously pretty pricey. But um, but I, the thing is, I know the Ryder Cup happened this past fall, but I didn't pay attention to it. And I know that, like, the U.S. team was favored. Um... I, you know, I just, I didn't, it, like, it was hap. I remember hearing, like, the build-up to it, but actually when it was held, it was like there was something else going on, or the the media didn't cover it that much or something, and so I kind of missed it, and I didn't watch it. Um, I was busy with some other stuff that weekend that they had it. Um, but seeing it, I mean, I guess I kind of wish I'd watched it, although the U.S. got pretty handily, got beaten pretty handily, although they, they came back the last two days a bit. The weird thing is Ricky Fowler was in there and his match really decided it with um, Tommy Fleetwood and he he basically um, what's it called he uh, he gave him the the la you know he had two, Tommy Fleetwood had two putts to make a, it was like a forty foot putt uh, to have that hole and basically would clinch Europe winning because it, it would clinch a half point for them in that match on that on the sunday match um he conceded it rather he just conceded his second putt his second putt fleetwood's first putt was like it was like 40 feet and he got within maybe six seven feet it wasn't a gimme and he just he just gave i mean you know 
that would also assume that Ricky would actually have made his putt, which was like twenty feet away, maybe too. But I don't know. It's like you don't give. You know, I don't. You don't. You play till the very end. I mean, this is more emotional and more passionate than even like the the regular tournaments, even the majors, because it's you're playing for pride and. It's really more. Uh, it's, the Ryder Cup is really a different animal. It's it's almost like a completely different sport. Um, but it was cool to see. It's cool to see they had a lot behind the scenes with the European team and with um, the American team um, and their families and stuff like that. I kind of felt bad for Keegan Bradley. They showed Keegan Bradley. He's older than a lot of the guys that were on the Ryder Cup team, and it was like going coming down for um, Zach Johnson, who was the captain, had to pick. Uh, one or two spots because they the way they work they do they pick twelve spots and six of them are like qualified by based on a certain point system and six are just captain's picks and uh, he picked um, Justin Thomas instead which probably ultimately was the right move because Justin Thomas had a good history in, in the Ryder Cup and he played well at the Ryder Cup as it turned out but you know on paper I probably would have gone with Keegan although Keegan was very cool about it they showed him watching the Ryder Cup with his family and he was just rooting for him he's happy for the you know Justin Thomas and stuff like that but um you know it was interesting to see that I kind of felt bad for Keegan Bradley Boston guy is <laughs> is one scene where they show his son he's asking he's like so the Boston team so who's your favorite football team the Patriots oh and the Bills <laughs> he's like what are you talking about but um yeah, I mean, it was another good season. I don't know if this is going to be an ongoing thing. I mean, I'm sure if it does well on Netflix, they'll continue to... They're making season three right now, in effect. Um, and the Masters is coming up in a few weeks. And, uh, and then we have the the, the, the the PGA, of course, the U.S. Open, and um, and the, the Open champion and the oh, championship. And then if, I think what if this is the year that the... Um, the uh, they do the, the the presidents cup, but um, the the thing I wish they would cover actually more of. I mean, it'd be cool if they showed the the tournament that that was here. Which I remember Justin Thomas had to plan because he was trying to qualify for the the tour championship too. Because that he had a real unfortunately Justin Thomas, great player, has won two PGAs. He's been a, one of the best players in the the tour, the tour of the last decade. He um he just didn't play that well. I was reminded of that last year, but um, he played at the the 3M Open. I remember that. I mean, I've never gone to it. I should, one of these years, it's, it's kind of buggy out there, but they have it in the middle of whatever late July. It's like the tournament right after the British, after the the Open Championships. But I was just thinking it'd be cool to see them do something on the amateur, the U.S. amateur especially, because I, I would like watching the U.S. amateur. I don't know. I mean, I, they obviously only have so many hours and they shoot a lot of footage that doesn't show up in this thing and you got to think of interest it's, their focus is primarily on the pga tour and then they do a little bit on live too last year and this year the first season but you know there's if you're a golf fan you probably still do pay attention to um the u.s amateur i mean they could talk they could talk about women's golf too i suppose and women's amateur as well but i think from an interest standpoint there's still a lot of interest in the u.s amateur um I don't know. It's a matter of they do eight episodes or whatever, but still an entertaining watch. You know, you know, binge it, whatever. There's eight episodes, and um, if you if you didn't know about it, if you like uh, watching golf, watch, watching the PGA and everything like that, and um, if you haven't seen it, I had never finished the tennis one, the one on the 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 ATP tour and the W. It wasn't both. It was the ATP and WTA. See, that's the kind of thing. It's like they did one. I don't know if they're going to do more of these things. They did one on football. I don't know if it was them or it was HBO. They've done those things on football, but. You know, they could do them on every sport, I suppose. They've never really done it extensively, like, behind the scenes with the PGA Tour, um, the PGA Tour players. Even they could show, like, one of the things I didn't even mention, they did a whole thing on Matthew Fitzpatrick and his brother, especially Alex. And I remember watching, I think it was the British this past year, because Alex did really well. He actually did better than his brother. His bro Alex is not actually on the PGA Tour. He's on, like, the... One of the tour circuits in Europe, I forget the name of it. Um, it's like 705th in the world, but it'd be cool to see him get his card. I don't know if he died. I didn't have to check. I said, and I said I've sort of, I don't say I've soured entirely, but with John Rahm going to live, you know, kind of jumping ship. I've jumped ship a little bit on my, my addiction to watching the, the tour again. But with the major t tournaments and watching the, the players a few weeks ago, Players' Championship, I may get back into it again, despite the fact that I, I just hate the fact that all these great players are playing on another tour, and it's it's not in the field. I mean, it doesn't it hasn't impacted. Although my feeling is, 
I want them to basically not allow the, the live players to play in the majors because I want them basically, I want that to end live. In some one way or the other, I want end, want live to end. And that's the way it would be. But um, watching the majors, you still have, because Brooks Kepka won the PGA, you have, you know, Dustin Johnson and um, some of these other players that have gone to live, like uh, um, John Rahm, unfortunately. I hope John Rahm is the last. It's like, it's too bad, because John Rahm, last year, the year before, like, he wasn't on live. You know, he was one of the best PGA, and he won the Masters. He's the defending champion at the Masters. Now he's with Liv. But, um, anyway, that's my take on Full Swing Season 2, again, from Netflix. Have you seen it? Uh, please leave me a comment. Uh, but thank you for watching, and we'll see you next time.